Well, for more on this story, Emmanuel Iga has joined me on the set. He's a consultant in geopolitics and uh, international development and the author of Nigeria Handbook. Thank you very much for, for being with us here. Um, tell us Thank briefly, you. what has triggered these oil shortages and these power cuts? Well, this is a very surprising development. Uh, uh, but basically, Nigerians have been used to energy problems, energy crisis. This uh, uh, country that has a kind of chronic economic uh, problems due to energy crisis, chronic electric, electricity power supply problems. Uh, this is a country that is the largest economy in Africa. It's also the largest population, a lot of industries. And uh, uh, in uh, recent times, the government has been talking of about having uh, upgraded the power supply to uh, about uh, 8,000 megawatts. Uh, on the average, we think uh, the actual power supply is not more than 5,000 megawatts. But do try to compare this with uh, uh, a country like uh, South Africa, uh, which is the second largest economy, probably uh, more industrialized than Nigeria. Uh, they are producing 58,000 megawatts compared to Nigeria's uh, below 10,000 megawatts. So this is a problem on the electricity side. On the uh, premium motor spirit, petrol and diesel side, which you need uh, for uh, the transport sector, uh, it's been a problem of fuel scarcity. It's been a problem of fuel scarcity. Nigeria is the first producer of oil in Africa. That's the paradox. So uh, surprisingly, we are unable, or Nigeria is unable to uh, get its four mm, refineries functioning uh, optimally all the time. There are four public refineries, they are not functioning. Uh, probably not more than 30% of installed capacity of the four refineries. Well, we, the country is expecting a very big uh, uh, private refinery uh, being constructed by the uh, industrialist uh, Dangote. Uh, probably going to be uh, functional from next year. So, you, you, you mentioned the, the parallel between South Africa and Nigeria in terms of electricity, the four refineries when it comes to oil shortages. This is not a case of the government just not being able to see this coming. Exactly. So they are telling us uh, different uh, uh, versions of the, you know, trying to explain it in different ways. Just, uh, even talking of about uh, talking of the Ukrainian crisis, you see, so it's uh, very difficult to believe because Nigeria is not importing oil from uh, Ukraine. We are, exp we are oil exporters, and uh, uh, they are talking of dollar exchange rate, etc. I think uh, uh, the the main problem has been that uh, uh, the power sector uh, has not been properly organized. Electricity power su supply, uh, well, the sector has been deregulated. Uh, over 10 years ago, it has been liberalized. Uh, there is a poor record of, uh, uh, of uh, payments because, um, uh, you know, bill payments because the consumers uh, are not happy that uh, the policy uh, of uh, prepaid meters, which guarantees them uh, uh, the payment for the actual power they consume, uh, has not really been well implemented. Uh, the uh, power suppliers are uh, more interested in using what they call estimated bills. So they just arbitrarily fix a bill for you, depending on the kind of house you have, mm -hmm. what you have inside. And these bills could be very, very expensive. So they are not paid. And uh, uh, if the bills are not paid, then uh, uh, the uh, power supply suppliers don't have enough money to run their plants. So that's one aspect of the problem. The the key issue, what is happening now, is that although we've had electricity power supply issues permanently, it's a chronic problem, then you have fuel uh, shortage problems once in a while. Uh, what's happening now is that we have a combined uh, effect of the two. The two right. are happening at the same time for reasons that they are yet to explain, because the, the factors uh, that have been affecting our fuel and electricity supply are still the same factors. They've been and, there. And we, we heard that there's been a lot of anger, obviously, in Nigeria because of these shortages. Uh, people were saying that they wanted to hear from the government. Yesterday, President Mohamedou Buhari apologizing to the people of Nigeria for the impact that it's had. Uh, what can the government do in the short term? Because this has been going on for several weeks. 
Yes, the, uh, well, the, the power suppliers are optimistic that the market is going to uh, adjust itself and uh, there will be more uh, oil coming in, more refined oil and diesel coming in, and the price will go down. Currently, the price of diesel has gone up by as much as 150%, which is affecting the transportation sector. Uh, industri industries which are depending on uh, uh, power generators sometimes for their power. So um, I think in the mm, short term, um, well, uh, there is no other solution than uh, 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 increasing the importation of the oil that is needed, uh, the premium motor spirit, the diesel that is needed. Uh, there has to be some short-term measure like that to increase it and uh, find a way to cushion uh, the price uh, increase uh, to reduce the price, possibly. Emmanuel Iga, a consultant in geopolitics and international development and the author of Nigeria Handbook. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.